Twitch, the multi-stream, the, the multi-stream chat. So it's that. Then let's try YouTube. I see it, but it doesn't look like it went through here. Hmm, interesting. That's kind of hard to see. Okay, I'll try to keep an eye on the different chats in case anyone pops up. It's a little hard, but okay. So today we're going to go through um, the Versal Knock simulation. So the Versal um, has kind of some new components. One of them is the Knock, the network on chip. Um, as you can see in the bottom left picture, it says programmable network on chip. And this is a packet based um, address driven interface, right? So there's a massive global absolute address, which you can use to send a message from anywhere to anywhere. Um, and that's kind of how it works. And it has its own configuration. It can be, it has its own placement and routing when you interact with like these uh, fabric connections. So I wanted to sit down and talk about the, how we add it or the different settings we can walk through. Um, um, how does the addressing work? How does the place and route work? And then look what the simulation, the default simulation test gives us for the knock versal. So we're going to start with the newest tools. I hide that. Oh well. Um. So get out of here. So we're going to start with um this uh knock interface um and this is kind of how the knock is interpreted on the bovado block diagram we have the network on chip we have um various slave interfaces various master interfaces and we have the ddr and this is a a quick uh configuration i threw down we're gonna we're gonna build it together real quick it has three traffic generators and three VRAM controllers and a DDR controller. So um, let's walk through this together, how this works. So let's go ahead and do a new project. I'm gonna call it test should be fine. And we're going to pick the 1902, grab that X right there. Um, let's do a speed grade to MP and let's just pick this one right here. Um, so we're going to drop down the knock, we're going to see how it connects and figure out how we can add this to a complicated knock uh, system. So we're just going to drop in down the Axi knock. Okay, let's go make the diagram full size. Um, and when we hit block automation, we get a lot of options. So let's 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 walk through these. So the CIPS, the SIPS, is the processor system. So this is going to include your R5, your A73s, and any of the other processor systems. So we want to ignore that. It's just going to complicate our simulation, and it's not worth in this environment. But if in a true design, we'll add that. Um, we're going to do three traffic generators, no external sources at the time. We're going to do uh, three BRAM controllers. Um, we have we can choose DDR, LPDR, DDR combo. Uh, we're just going to do one of those. We're going to add the performance monitors and use the simulation clock and reset sources. So we hit OK, and now it's going to add all of these components. Um, and we have the traffic generators, the performance monitors, and the VRAMs, and the DDR as well right here. But it's not hooked up. 
All we need to do is go run connection automation and hit all. And this is going to hook up all the clocks and resets correctly. And we still have a few signals missing because of how it was set up. And that's just mostly probably the clock wizard over there. So we hit all again for our automation. And we now have something that will simulate, not synthesize, simulate. So we're going we're gonna to walk through a few things here. We're going to walk through our traffic generators, our performance monitors, and our knock. So first, let's walk through the knock settings because, wow, this has a lot of settings. And you can also, okay, so we, let's, we'll just walk through this. This is a lot. <laughs> we got a lot of tabs. We got a lot of information. So we have our slave interfaces, our master interfaces, and our clocks. Kind of obvious. Um, I think the uh, Axie clocks, it automatically determines which interface has which clock and automatically does proc classing for you. Um, so these are also important. These inter knock connections we can use in a VHDL design. And when it's brought into the FPGA or into the Vivado tool, it will translate that as a knock to knock connection. And even though you have HDL for it, it will not be implemented as HDL, but implemented as a knock configuration. So that would be something interesting. And then we have the memory controller with which port um, and the different settings for that. Um, we have our inputs and we wanted to add one. Oh, let's maybe not do that. <laughs> okay, we have our inputs and we can tell if it's PL, AIE, um, and those are the PSs. I gotta figure out how to add the AIE. I need to go find a good AIE example. What does it, does it disappear? I don't know how that works. We have parity, which is really interesting. Address, data, address, and data parity. That's some interesting um, air correction or not air detection you can add to this interface. I really need to read up how to do the uh, uh, artificial intelligence. We'll, we'll have to get the AI engines, um, the outputs, connectivity. So this is a really cool one. So um, we'll play around with this later. But right now, slave one or slave zero only connects to master zero and a memory port zero. So this uh, slave zero can access master zero and the ddr and so each of them is a one-to-one -one connection and all of them could connect to the uh, ddr interface um so this is kind of another interesting thing where it says okay what type of traffic do you want do you want um best effort asynchronous and low latency um own qs path i'm not sure if we can even change that it's interesting what if we if we do anything like this is it it doesn't change anything interesting um we have different bandwidths um let's 100 seems kind of slow we can change that to 300 and this is useful when we run the place and route oh we got lots of fun information cool this is useful when you do the place and route of the knock. So let's look at the DDR basic. Um, this type of DDR, this clock, okay, simple. Memory information is where we get kind of the fun settings of what we need to do to get everything configured properly. DDR address memory, just kind of what type of addressing um, math you're doing for this. Anything else useful? Okay, so that's it. That's what we get out of the knock. Now let's look at a traffic generator. So we're using a non-synthesizable, so a simulation-focused uh, traffic generator. Um, the Axie. Okay, that's this is all basic information. So let's go to the non-synthesized viable options. We have all of our Axie options. What type of data? Um, the address space, this will update once we validate. I'll show you that. And the bandwidth and the number of transactions. There's also a, isn't there a oh, data integrity check? I kind of want to put that on. We'll put that on in another simu another option. So that's what the traffic generator provides, just provides 
uh, transactions in a certain range targeting a certain bandwidth expectations. So the performance monitor, that's basically just watching the Axie bus. And then we have the VRAM controllers. So let's watch what happens when we do the validation process, because this is where things get interesting. Let's bring up the tickle so we can see what's happening here. So um, I'm going to hit validate. And it says that we have six unassigned address segments. And this is where the masters are accessing the various slave interfaces. So um, we'll hit yes and let it auto assign it. And then we'll go look at what addresses are assigned. And down here, we can see it um, working on the uh, knock interface. And it finished. So if we look at this, it had a phase where it was doing the placement and routing for the knock. So when we do validate a block diagram, that is when we're doing knock placement and routing, or at least for, I guess, a portion of the design. I have no clue how you do multiple block diagrams and hierarchy. Yeah, this just seems like something that needs to be tested with some more design applications. Okay, so, but here is our uh, knock. Let's look through it real quick. So um, it's kind of interesting. So up here in the top of the FPGA, we have the different interfaces to the um, AI engines. And then in the middle, these um, columns are the PL interfaces. And then down here, we have the DDR interfaces. And these are the SIPS interfaces, where it's mostly the processor. But there's other... There's other um, there's other interfaces on the um, knock. Like there's, you know, if we go back to that picture, we had, you know, Ethernet, um, PCIe, and other things are accessible over the knock. And I don't really see it in this picture. So um, we would probably have to do some designs with those uh, type of features to see what happens and figure out um, how that works. So we have our DDR interface, we have our three traffic generators, and we have our three VRAM interfaces. Now let's go look at how this is working. Um, so address editor, assign an address for each of them. So we signed a basic two gig range for the DDR at the, at the low end, and then each of them assigned a different address for the uh, VRAMs. Now, if we go look at the traffic generator, it is going from the base address, the DR, to the top address of the BRAM, it can access, or it can access. It can't access all the BRAMs because of our connectivity thing. So um, let's go ahead and run simulation real quick, and then we can walk through what else we can change and see how that affects the behavior. Um, but let's save it. Um, sources, make it top level. Let me see what other things were designed here. Feel free to say hi. Get me practicing looking at the chat. But right now we'll just go through um, Hopefully what I have planned. If you have any questions, if you want to try anything with a knock real quick, we have we got we got time, we can try some things. So if you go much bigger, um it gets it gets it gets really slow and likely to break. Okay. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. We're on the simulation. Uh, we need to compare the uh, estimated latency with the simulated latency. And I'm curious to how that works. Um,
feel like uh, FPGA uh, development is not a good, easy thing to stream when you're going to sit here for ages um, watching things slowly build. Could be done. Simpson takes it. Check. Discord. See if anyone said in dis anything in Discord. Eh. I try jumping on the stream chat so we can have people talk. Okay, we're getting closer. That's good. Afraid if we make this much more complicated, it won't be won't be able to easily stream it. Man, I, I need to find a usable versatile device so we can really dig down into it. I was looking at the Alpha Data PA one hundred, but was quoted a uh, price over like twenty k. I didn't feel like paying that much. The Versal AI Edge series should be coming out end of this year, beginning of next year, and that should be a more affordable Versal part. But more affordable may not be enough of what I would like to do. I want something I can play with the PCIe. I want something I can go through all the features and test them. Uh, I want I want the Alpha Data Board. Mm. I need to find a way to um, track that down. <laughs> yeah, Michael, takes a really long time. Also, amazing how quickly and complicated this gets. I swear, when I went through a test run of this, it was much, much faster. Uh, not sure we'll have. I wanted to show how it gets more complicated. Maybe we'll read through the documentation but afterwards. Okay, so we have the simulation. These signals don't ever really change, but there's a simulation level. Let's go ahead and what would be a good thing? The, is it just going to be the, the knock? No, not that one. The... Right here. So this has a bunch of buses. Yeah, so these guys right here. Let's add these. Add to waveform. Cool. So at the bottom here we have these buses. And let's go ahead and hit run all and watch how these buses work I we'll have to look at the what was happening down here and then we can move up and see so right now um there's a simulation wrapper around this system that Lovato automatically adds. It looks at each uh, traffic generator and each source that it can write to and does a test between every source and every destination. And then it tries to measure the simulated packet latency between these two interfaces. Okay, we finish. Okay, so let's walk through. Actually, let's show the waveform real quick. The waveform is probably interesting. So these are probably the interfaces talking to the DDR, but let's go ahead, zoom in to these guys. So we can see the read and writes of each of these systems. 
So these are the traffic generators and these are the B ramps. And if we zoom out again, the traffic generators are running all the time and the B ramps are only running when they are the source. Um, so if we go up, they have some information about it, but here they are starting the test. They got 50, 100, 150, 200. Um, and we finished all of our transactions. And then down here, we get the information for each source, which is each simulation. And we get the, where do we get the achieved? Right here, we get the achieved bandwidth. So latency range from 16 to 30 cycles of the Axie clock. And we got about 300 megabits per second, which is what we requested. So that means it achieved its bandwidth expectations. But um, when you start combining like the VRAM sources, um, we got some really long latencies and that's not good. So let's go look back at the um, NOC and see what it suggested. Where are they? Do I need to hit? Do I hit validate and it tells me? Okay, if we hit validate. Where's the knock information? There was like the knock information down here. Uh, that kind of annoys me. And there's a knock tab over here. It disappeared. This is why I don't like Bovada. Sometimes it just. Uh, it's all buggy. It's all beta. It's all still working on trying to solve everything. So let's go. Um, let's go to let's go push the system a little harder and then it's going to take a bit of time, but let's do it. So we're going to go back to the traffic generators. We're going to push these up to uh, 500 um, each. And we're going to see how this affects our our system. I want to see this. I want to see the system suffer. I want to. I want to push it. So let's go to knock. And before um, we only had the one to one connectivity. So let's get everything connected to everything else. Good. Oh, and let's go to the expected bandwidth and put five hundred on everything. I wish they had a better way of doing this. this is very slow. Like if you could just, you know, add number to all of them. So this will help the place and router have expectations. And we're basically weighting them all the same. So we're probably just making it harder for it. So it doesn't have, it's these, these are all the same interfaces, all the same requests. So it's going to have trouble doing the place and routing of it. Okay, cool. So we're going to hit, yes. That's just assigning additional VRAM memories as we see down here. So they now line up. And now each um, traffic generator is connected to all three VRAMs and the DDR. And we'll see um, that once it gets going. So in a tickle script down here, we see a tickle console, we see it doing the placement and the the placement portion of the knock, and then it'll do the routing. If you notice, this takes a lot longer than when we did the one-to-one -one connection. The system is trying really, really hard to do this. When I did uh, like eight to eight and higher ones, it took a very long time. And um, I'm kind of curious to what's happening under the hood. When we look at it, it looks super easy. Like, it should we take seconds to place and route this simple design? But somehow, there's a lot of little configurations in these things that's happening that's kind of hard to see. Okay, hey, where's my where's my where's my knock report? I want my where's my expected latency? View is it is it where is it? Window. Knock. Is that what we're going? Here we go. Knock QS. 
Thank you. Um, so we have these latencies. Um, so let's, oh, you can actually see the connections, right? You can see all the cute little, uh, where these are going. Let's zoom out a little, a little bit. And you can see DDR, BRAM, 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 DR, no, BRAM, BRAM, then DDR. So we can see the different interfaces. Now we're going to save this. And we're going to close out the simulation, reopen it. Because I'm not sure how it's going to react to the changes we sent. I don't trust it to properly handle the changes. So let us crack it open again and see how this works. And kind of uh, what, how does this help us with designs? Um, I guess the more interesting thing after this is the like, how do we now incorporate this knock into complex designs? Say I want to create um, little blocks. Like I don't want my design. I feel like it'd be kind of silly to have my design all contained in one block diagram or um, one HDL or something like or like that. So we want to be able to break the knock down into different systems. We want we want to maybe write a microblaze that can access the DDR a BRAM and a AI engine and maybe the processor space and just, just figure out, provide examples where we can get communication from one interface to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. And that'd be great. Um, but I, I need to find, I need to find some real hardware to show that on. So for now, we'll do some basic Movado simulations to, Play around with it so when we do get some real hardware we can rapidly get something working on it and play around with what's happening and now we'll wait like um hopefully this launches the same not much slower so we can see what's happening Has anyone else had a uh, fun experience with the Bursal? It Xilinx tells me it's been out for four years, but it still feels like a beta device, especially when their products say beta, their IP say beta, and their uh, tools seem to have trouble handling any complex designs at the moment and have lots of fun, unique bugs. But hopefully we can get, um, Bursal can get I think it's a great device. Um, everything I see about it, I'm happy about what they're doing. Um, and I want to see people do some really cool stuff on it. Um, it seems to have been targeted to data center to people first and to a very high level software. I, 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 bet they, I bet they found it difficult to provide the same level of uh, customization that we lower level people expect. But they could provide a more, they could provide a stricter design to software people. And software people aren't going to be messing with those low level uh, toggles as much. So they're able to uh, push the product to the software people first. And as they slowly themselves begin to understand the device they made and figure out how to have tools configure it. Um, then they can start bringing it down lower and lower. So it kind of makes sense that that you have to target, um, you need to target the high level user first because it's it's the easier person to get the product out to. Ah, it's kind of weird thinking about how to make products. I would love to make a, I want to make an FPGA product in the future, but I'm not sure how that would go. I have plans for USB C one, and we'll see when that happens. Hopefully next year we can get prototype started. So this is going to take a lot longer than the previous one. So the previous one we did 100 transactions for every for every uh, reference. So we're going to do 100 transactions again, but we have more we have more destinations to go to. So I think it may take a little bit longer.
Yeah. They they talk about the configuration guide a little bit in the in the XRTC meeting. But when I try to talk to FPGA, FE reps and whatnot, they don't really get um they like, oh, the configuration guide has everything you would want to know. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I want to know how this works. And they're like, the configuration guide has everything. I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and I'm getting annoyed with asking the same question again and again and not getting a response. I'm trying to figure out. They did not add the other interfaces. Hmm. No, there's 400. That's good. Just curious why there's two different sections. Huh. Okay, so ranged from 18 to 55. Go back here at the first one, 18 to 55. Okay, it's still dynamic, but it's not ridiculous. Um. Average though 37 and 32, 32, 32, 36. Okay, that's not bad. So the estimation simulation agree. This now that, that that's that's kind of crazy. So what's probably happening here is there's uh this there's conflicts between two users, two two traffic generators trying to access the same BRAM, and packets are getting lost and um when I did a more complex design, I think I actually saw timeouts happen. Yeah, I don't think we had any timeouts in this issue, but that's not good. <laughs> um, so, but we need to have a real system, right? Because these are simulation numbers. What's what happens with real applications? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so I mean that's about where we can go from here. Um, it's we there's not. We really can't go much further at this simulation level. Um, we could, you know, try to add a processor, try to add the AI engines, um, but I don't have a good way to test them, and I don't want to simulate them until I know how I can simulate them by themselves. So, what would be the most interesting thing? We could try to program one of the AI processors maybe that's what we need to figure out is how we do ai processor programming in vitus sounds terrifying um let's try it real quick we're gonna open up a new block diagram we're gonna call it aie block right sure sounds like a beautiful name and i want to know if where is so it's this, i'm curious i'm not sure if you are or not but i'm gonna drop down to ai engine real quick that's a cool picture but doesn't help me um, so we have a bus, and that's about it. So we, we have a bus. That, that doesn't tell me anything. Um, we have clocks. And okay, so what happens if we add an IP here? We say no. And do one traffic generator and no ddr and we have a performance on it and one connection automation the ai engine yeah let's 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 see what happens i'm just curious okay so we have drop down an ai engine does let's validate real quick Look okay, like the address is already predefined. And okay, we have it accessing the AI. It's smart like that. Um, address editor. We have a specific address range for the AI engines. Um, okay, let's go down here. I want to see if the slave port is an AIE. Okay, I say let's go for it. We're going to save this 
change our simulation target. Um, and go for it. I'm curious to how this is going to work in simulation. We talked about potentially um, simulation not supporting it, but we'll, I guess we'll figure it out. So we're going to set that as top. Put my simulation, we're going to exit it. Um, let's make sure, go through here and make sure. I don't want that, I want that. There you go. Thank you. Um, do, no, thank you. Okay, uh, is it okay? And yeah, let's see how simulating an AIE or AI engine connection works. Okay, wait, wait a minute. I was told, I was told that there are Axi stream interfaces to the AI engine. That AI engine had an Axi port, not an Axi stream port. Okay, we're going to just delete the knock after this and connect the traffic generator directly to the AI engine. I want to know if that works. But there should be an Axi stream port. The Burstall AI, what's it? AI engine XD stream port. How do I get this? Okay. We have an Axi stream interconnect. Each tile has an Axi stream interconnect. Okay, um, how are we gonna pop this open? Let me open up a new window. Here we go. That's why that's going. We have actually stream interconnects. And how do I get this? Is this the tiles? We have this. But how do I add this? Okay. Um, I don't see it in my block diagram. How do I get to that stream interface?
Hello. Okay. Sorry. The audio seemed to have gone squirrely there. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking and I don't see an obvious way to do the Axie interconnect. Do you want me to place it as a primitive? So direct Axie 4 stream interface. Tell me how I do that. I want to know. I was told I can interact with the PL via Axie Stream. And I see nothing of that. There an AI engine block diagram. Do we um is it like an array interface? We type array interface. But the AI we have here this is a simulation hmm there is there no way to do that let me see um Virtual AI in stream port tutorial. Right, right, right. Um, this is just what we are looking at, right? I don't. There's no good block diagram integration. How do we create the port? Well, shall we see if the SIPS has anything? Right? Should we see if the SIPS? SIPS. I just want to know if there's anything on the SIPS that will tell me. Okay. Unblock automation. It will do full system, yeah, yeah, we'll just hit okay, that's fine. We'll deal with it. I want to know if there's AI built into this. Okay, that's that's this is the processor. So there's there's no obvious AI engine features in here. Um, those are useful at the moment. IO debug. Interesting. Blocking, yeah, yeah. Dial sim library. Click only. Clock sources. MPI is the processor. Um, Okay, device tamper, PLPS interfaces. Those are what I expect, but where are the AI? AI engines, no AI engines, no AI engines. Okay, this is a question I'm going to have to figure out. I'm going to figure out how to do Axie Stream with, um, with, that's just the, yeah, the CPM is the PCIe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make it on my to-do list to do an a figure out how to do an AI engine example, a very low-level AI engine example, right? Let's. I want to be able to do a loopback. Let's let's uh, let's do a software loopback of an AI engine, and I wanna let's demo that 
later. Okay, so we went over the knock as much as we can go over now. Um, let's hopefully get a real system and go over a real information about it. Um, but let's... Let me track down um, some information about the Versal, and I'll see if I can get anything better. Thank you for joining me. I actually surprisingly had a good amount of traffic for this video, which is a little odd, I guess. The Versal is a hot topic. Hopefully we can address that a little bit better. Um, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the coming days. I hope to do some, let's see, some videos using Google Colabs, some videos uh, continuing the work on um, the Arctic Ultra Scale Plus and some in Lydix and some, maybe some more USB um, development. Um, if you have any questions, um, Discord, um, comment section, go for it. Twitter, if you find me. Um, any of those places you can ask questions um, about FPGA 